on your Jump, 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 jump. What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party What's up, everybody? It's the BKMC, the MCEO, Talib Kweli. This is the People's Party. What's up, party people? I got Jasmine Lee in the house with me. Make some noise for Jasmine Lee. Oh, my God. I just raised the roof. <laughs> Jasmine, how you feeling? I'm great. How are you? Good. We are going to New York City. Yes, crew. For this People's Party. Now, this show has given me the opportunity to sit down with people that I've never met before, but that I admired from a distance. Mm -hmm. It's also giving me the opportunity to sit down with friends and family and people I've grown up with. And I've been very honored and privileged to live a life where many of my friends and family have gone on to do great things, have great accomplishments so that they've earned a seat at this table. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm doing them a favor. They doing me a favor. We're doing this for each other. This guest, because of our history, how our history is intertwined with the music business, how our history is intertwined with my introduction to raucous records, um, I feel like this show was created for me to have to sit down with this guest. Mm -hmm. So this episode is going to be very, very, very classic for me personally. Um, and God willing, it'll be classic for the fans as well. Um, it's one of my best friends. This man is the first person to put me in a studio. First person to record a demo tape with me. The first person who taught me that I can't just rapidly, rapidly rap, that I need to have a hook on the song. Um... His love for hip hop is, I, I can't overstate it. Um, I promise you his story will be a movie one day. Not just a hip hop artist, a true musician, a renaissance man. He like Lorenz Tate and Love Jones, you know, with the poetry and the motorcycle and I shit like that. I finally saw it. Okay, you saw it, so you get, <laughs> you get that reference now. Um, a violinist, a guitarist, a revolutionary minded artist, one of my favorite MCs, John Forte is in the house. John Forte! John Forte! <laughs> My favorite line. <laughs> uh, eating mangoes in Trinidad with attorneys. <laughs> that was a... Uh, Who knew how? <laughs> that, that, that bar <laughs> was at a point in your life mm. where you were really doing shit like that. Facts. Like, John Forte Facts. was early. He was like, John Forte was rapping about South Beach. Like... In between where it's at now, where it's kind of like decadent and like those buildings are, are empty because people spent too much money there. Mm. And when it was just nothing but like older Jewish people, you were early on that scene. There was no art based basil when you was rapping about South Beach. Yeah. And, and, and yet I felt late. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like we were we were there. We were um, we were explorers. I, I, I had the 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 privilege of um, listening to the Super Nat. Mm. Uh, episode on my way out here mm -hmm. from the East Coast yesterday. Shout out to Super Nat. Mm. Right. And so to hear Nat or, 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 or to hear you guys, you know, talk about those times. Mm -hmm. And um, I have vivid, vivid memories of leaving, you know, 336 Legion Street in Brownsville, Brooklyn mm. with $3.50 mm -hmm. in, in, in my pocket, like barely enough to get to the city and mm -hmm. back. Like that we was- Yeah, hop the train. We, 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 <laughs> and, and we often did, yeah. we often did, but, but you know, our, um, our lack of access to capital mm -hmm. uh, did not uh, stand in the way of, of, of us being, uh, you know, as, uh, or, or, or being the pioneers that, that we were and, mm -hmm. and the explorers and, and, you know, hearing about, um, things in Miami or, or hearing about things in Paris mm -hmm. and then figuring out ways to get there yeah. and, and, and to show up and to be present. And yeah. How important for that Explorer spirit was New York city and the, you know, the, the public transportation system and having access to just get on a dollar van or, or hop the turnstile for free or, you know, how important was that to the nature of wanting to just be adventurous? You know, I think that, being, uh, I remember PS one eighty three in, mm -hmm. in, in in Brownsville. My my, my first day at, at school, um, the class we were going through some reading assignments, and 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 I was pulled out of of, of that class, and I was sent to the principal's office, mm -hmm. and I I wasn't told why. Um, they just sent me to the principal's office, and I sat there. And the next thing I know, a couple of hours later, my mom showed up, and. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, what, what did I do? What did I, was I, was I being disobedient to the, to, to, to the teacher? Was there an incident that I was, is it mistaken identity? You know, mm -hmm. I'm seven years old at the, at the mm -hmm. time. 
And my mom came out of, of, of the principal's office after being in there for, you know, 20 minutes to a half an hour. And, and I'm looking at her and, you know, she's this little diminutive mm-hmm. woman. But Shout out to John Forte's mom. Flo. Shout out to Flo. Flo, I love you. Yes. I love you, I love you I love too, you. Flo. She yeah. used to take care of us back in the day. <laughs> oh, my no gosh. No doubt. Yeah, she took care of me the other week. I just showed up and knocked on the door. I was like, can mm-hmm. you make me eggs? And she did. And it was beautiful. <laughs> so, oh, so when, 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 when she came out of the office and I looked up at her and... You know, I'm like, what did I do? I didn't do it, and <laughs> and and she and 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 she said, well, let, let's just walk, uh, and and she said, the school told me that we we that they didn't have any that they couldn't offer you anything, mm. um, that they don't have a program for you, that that uh, that the tests, uh, you know, you 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 did well on them, and they and they recommended uh, another school. That that has a you know what was called a gifted and talented program, but yep. but it's a ways away. Yep. Um, so was that Skyler? It was it was PS that was PS three twenty seven, okay. which was um which was Bristol, um uh, which was kind of you know further even deeper into the heart of Brownsville. Um, but it required me, and 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 that was t- sort of the caveat, um, because there was no busing system. Mm-hmm. It would require me taking public transportation at mm-hmm. seven or eight years old. So. You had to learn very, very early yeah. how to navigate the city if if you if you wanted to reify those dreams, if you mm-hmm. wanted to 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 get closer to um, you know where wh- where you belonged, yeah. and, and 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 so you know that was that was a lesson that I think I and, and you, I mean we yeah, I mean come on, we were we were kids, yeah, we were kids on on on, on, you know, on, on everywhere. Do you remember how we met? <laughs> Josh, you we spoke about this on my show. Yes, Viber, y- yes, Viber we Hire, did. But yes, yes. So I think you might have. I think you met and came in contact with Rubix mm. and Juju through, and through Josh. Through Josh, through and Josh. I met you right. through Rubix. Right. Who shout out to Rubix by the way. He Peace was upset Rubix, that I was Juju. telling telling stories about his younger debaucherous life. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like you were dry snitching on him. I was dry snitching felt, on, okay. on Rubix a little bit. Okay. I was. That's unfair. Yeah, That's it was unfair. unfair. Yeah. So I had to apologize. This is my good friend. He was like, "Yo, you know, they don't know me like that." <laughs> That's old shit. Why are you bringing up old shit? <laughs> Take that out of context. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember, this is what I remember. Rubix would be always talking about my man Forte. And, right. You know, he'd be excited to, to know you because of because of the adventurous spirit. Mm-hmm. You're one of these people who coming from Brownsville, sure. hopping on a train, going to the city, to, for going to parties, going to the village to buy clothes and stuff. In Brooklyn, my friends on the block that I went to junior high school with ended up selling drugs. And Rubik's and Juju wasn't about that. They was like, let's go to like a house music club mm. and dance and buy these Jabo jeans and buy these Zodiac shoes and wear Paisley shirts. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me a little bit about, you know, because that's what, when I met you, I liked your style. That was the first thing that I was like, okay, this kid has style. And I, I want to I have style. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tell me about what that was like for a kid from Brownsville. To be dressed in that sort of New York City '90s bohemian, shopping at antique boutiques, shopping at uniques, hanging out on Broadway, hanging out by Grace Papayas and watching Square Park. What was that like for you? That bohemian chic was a result of not being able to afford the brands mm. that I aspired to own, and so having to make <laughs> fake do, it till you make it. One hundred percent having to having to make do with what was around, mm-hmm. and more often than not, if that was a fabric that came out of you right. know mom's closet, and then flipping that into a headband, mm-hmm. um, and you know coming across a, 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 a distressed denim jacket, um, long it before it was cool, before because about before it was called a distressed denim, right? Exactly, <laughs> it was like because three cousins ago, yeah. you know, and and it, and it found its way to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what it was, man? Like 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 anything else, whether it was walking through the streets with a violin, you know, I speak about that often. Yeah, you were and, into and, Vivaldi, it, and and and, and <laughs> it, it, it wasn't cool, right? So. In lieu of being cool, you had to be confident, mm-hmm. and we speak about that as you know, the, as, as being MCs, mm-hmm. you know, as as is, is taking on um, this persona of 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 oh, these are my greatest hits long mm-hmm. before social media. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is who I who I who I who I who I really am, mm-hmm. you know. And you're and it, it's a privilege for you to for you to witness this in in in, yeah. in, 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 in its greatest form. Like yes, thank me, thank thank me. <laughs> right. um, so. We had to embody that, and so you know, five, 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 seven, five, eight. You know that that mattered not. Mm. You really had to carry yourself like you know it, it is. It is whatever, and 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 so it wasn't about being tough. It wasn't about being arrogant. It was about just being confident in the fact that you 
were and, and are here now and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and deserve the right to be, to be witnessed, mm-hmm. right? Just like, just like other people, uh, you know, but, but yeah, you, you deserve the right to be seen. And so, yeah. and so that's what I was wearing. It was, it was, it, it was my individuality and, in, and, in, and always aspiring, always, you know, kind of looking to, to, to trends because I, I was a fan and, and of fashion music right. and the culture, right. but, but not, not being, not having that bankroll, you know, it's like, well, how do I flip it and, 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 and still pay, and still not be so far out mm-hmm. that, 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 that I'm like, you know, yeah. alienated, but, but, but to, but to make it work for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's also interesting is that that time, um, I was fascinated with 5% philosophy and culture peace to the gods and yes and peace earths. to the gods and the earths you were kind of my introduction into that I, I saw it from a distance but my friendship with you made me explore it more um, I met Ali Asha through you peace to Ali Asha peace to Ali Asha yeah. um, and he was into that um, what, and I, meeting Ali Asha was eye opening for me because you know and I hope I'm, I hope I'm not uh, telling too much of Ali's business mm. Um, but he has white people in his family mm-hmm. and I would be, I'd be at his house and be see white family members around, but he's, he's 5% at this mm-hmm. time. So it made me understand that, that just because someone is 5% doesn't mean that they look into every white person like you, this evil racist. Facts. Devil. You Facts. understand? Mm-hmm. And, um, I met Allah's son, rest in peace and Shabar through you. Mm-hmm. Um, these are people that really, really really informed my philosophy on life. I never became 5%, but my community that I came into being an artist around was nothing but 5%ers. Um, can you break some of that down for people who might be deaf, dumb, and blind? The 5%, my, my introduction to the, the, the 5% nation was being in Brownsville, Brooklyn, and mm-hmm. being surrounded by, by, by young gods. Long before I knew that they were Earths, I, 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 I met the gods in the, in the community. Mm-hmm. And um, they had magnificent monikers. That's right. They had magnificent monikers. Buster Rom said they sounded like Transformers. <laughs> he, they sounded like the gods. They they yeah. they, they, they 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 were to me, mm-hmm. right? And 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 they came around with names like wonderful, names like scientific, names like almighty, mm-hmm. and wow. Mm. Wow! Like yes, yeah. Like I, 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 I yes. aspire. Yes, yes. You know, I, I, I aspire to that greatness, and it was, it was being proximate to, it was being proximate to the five percent nation. It was mm-hmm. being proximate to the Rastafarian community. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a community of people, whether you <sighs> Hebrew, Israelite, five percent Rasta, and those neighborhoods in Brooklyn. The overlap, the mm-hmm. overlap is 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 such that. Um, in a in a community where you weren't encouraged to speak to strangers mm-hmm. because you never knew who that who, who that mm-hmm. person was there were certain there were certain men and women who who, who walked among us who 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 wore different fabrics who came from uh, different traditions um, but when they entered in, in a room when they saw one another you noticed that there was a that there was a, a mutual respect mm-hmm. you noticed that there was a um, a familial spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, there was grace. Mm. There was dignity. Right. And so that that that's all that attracted me to the 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 five percent nation, to the nation of Islam, to the Rastafarian community, to the Baptist Church, mm-hmm. the best parts of it. Mm-hmm. So you give me you give me faith and allow for me to extract that that that, that grace, that dignity, that righteousness, that. Um, you know those those sort of tools that you can put into your in, mm-hmm. in, into your mental health uh, wellness regimen and spiritual health wellness regimen. Mm-hmm. Sign me up for, for for that. No doubt. Not the dogma. Not yeah. the you know. Not the. Yeah. Speak to okay. that because um, the same way that people could be Christian and be Jewish and be Muslim and look at some of the dogma and look at some of the stuff from the holy books that might sound archaic and seem and 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 take that to cut that stuff out but really live though by those principles i feel like people don't give five percent uh which is a newer obviously in the scope of these thousand year old uh beliefs ideas um i don't feel like people give five percenters that that room that could be true mm-hmm. but i don't know if that matters mm-hmm because energy is neither lost nor found, but merely transformed. Mm-hmm. So that wave that, you know, that, 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 that birthed brand Nubian, mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, Rakim. Yeah. Um, Busta, Big Daddy Kane. John Forte. John Forte. You Jay Z, I think, secretly. We'll and, and, that later. and not so secretly, right? right? I mean, he's he, he dropping he, some bars. And he's wearing the flag. Yeah. He's wearing the flag publicly. Yeah. So, whatever that spark was, whatever that catalytic spark was, remains, is, and always will be. So, I'm not worried mm-hmm. about, about the vibes and, 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 and who's on that or not, because I know what my vibes are, mm-hmm. right? And, so as, uh, what's harmonious to me is 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 is, is being in in that energy yeah. and, and not necessarily being caught up in who's not who's not on our page okay. and who's not here now because I am here now. That's right. right. That's right. Um, I like to consider myself a superhero when it comes to rap. I think I should. I think you, you are. should. You are. Um, Every superhero has an origin story. Mm-hmm. My origin story starts in Makiba Mooncycle's apartment. <laughs> and, um, you know, wow. Makiba Mooncycle used to be roommates with Prodigal Son from Sons of Man. Mm-hmm. And this was when Sons of Man as a group was first forming. So shout out to Killer Priest, Heaven Razor, Peace. 62nd Assassin. Um, at this crib, I used to go over there and, you know, ODB would drop by. John Forte would drop by. You know, it was a vibe where we was, you know, drinking 40s and smoking blunts. Right. Oh. And... Uh, wait, 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 what was that? Uh, I don't know if that one was like, uh, like, are you sick? The, or no, was that... it was because of the 40s. You from, you from <laughs> I Roosevelt? still don't drink, I'm from Roosevelt, New York. You know I don't how many drink 40s they drink in Roosevelt, Long Island? I, I, I didn't know, know if Jasmine was missing it right now. <laughs> she was like, was like oh. <laughs> who saw was it? A 40 and a blunt. That's all I really want. Oh, I don't know, but I know that. That was like hook. a mantra. Yes, yeah, that's all I really want. It's like that, party and bullshit. Yeah. It was, party. Yeah. Um, uh. But I'm in this apartment in, I want to say... 95, 94, 95. That sounds about right. And I get a call from John Forte and he's like, I'm working at this record company. It's this <laughs> small independent record company called Ruckus. All right. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Ruckus? <laughs> right. He's like, it's these guys, you know, they do this drum and bass music. It's a punk rock band called Plastique. Plastique. You know, I don't know if they're punk rock. Uh, no, know, the alternative. Alternative rock. But, 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 and I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, please. But, but please. those guys, like uh, Plastique, uh, way ahead of their time. Yeah. Man. Rock and hip hop and the fusion. And yeah. it was it, it was electric, but sorry. Yeah. Sorry. But no, John Forte was an A&R for an independent record label called Raucous in 1994, yeah. 95. And me, I, I didn't start rap to be an independent underground conscious artist. Mm. I started rapping to be LL fucking Cool J. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be mainstream. You know, I, you know, I, I didn't start to be underground. So I remember when you came here, I was like, independent label? What the fuck is that? I want... Independent, you know. What's remember that? the far side, uh, Souls of Mischief. If yeah. you were, if you really dope, why ain't you signed yet? That was my mentality. Mm. Why well, I'm not mm. signed to sign the Jive Zamba? I'm a bomb. You. Why well, I'm not doing that? Yeah. And um, he's like, I'm gonna bring Jared Meyer, who is sitting in the back right there. Give it up to Jared. Guys. And yeah. Brian Brader, who is not in the back. I don't right. know where Brian is at. <laughs> Probably being He's here in fabulous somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking like very, very large glasses. Shades. Yeah. He's um, wearing a scarf. But he brought these guys into this apartment and they sat there and listened to us freestyle in their faces. Wow. It was hours. For was hours. At night. And because we didn't show up until we didn't get there until like I don't know, eleven or something like that, and this was well mm-hmm. into the well into the small hours. At one point, I even got a little worried that, that the neighbors <laughs> would. This was on now. This place is gentrified now, but it was it Eastern Park Place. Park? Oh. It was Park in No Park in Franklin Avenue. Off, yeah, Park Park Place of Franklin Avenue. They definitely call the cops on us now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely. Um, there was a woman who had a bar on Franklin Avenue because it's gentrified now. Mm. Shout out to Sid V. He, he DJs one of these bars. Peace, peace. Um, a woman got in trouble because she had, like, in the bar, she kept the exposed brick and kept the bullet holes as a part of the oh, tourist attraction. I, 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 I do remember But that this, was on yes. Franklin in that yeah. same area. So that's where we was at. Thank yeah. you, Jared, for gentrifying <laughs> Brooklyn. Jared! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. God First white Jared. man on Park Place ever. <laughs> he was there. He was, like, he was like, I like it here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm staying. Taking his feet out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys, it's great. <laughs> right, they got exposed brick with real bullet holes. Wow. Um, <laughs> A pioneer. Yeah, man, yeah. but you know, that. so that's my origin story. Story. Tell me about how did we? How did that day happen? So, and I didn't sign a rock as I did because I didn't want to be on an independent label. What happened was you didn't, you didn't want to be on an independent label. I didn't. I didn't imagine myself as an A and R. Right. I imagined right. myself as being signed as being an artist. Oh. And so when I met with Jared and Brian and they called me and how'd y'all meet? Well, 
um, was it Deanna? It was a few, your, your, right, Deanna, um, their friend from college. Mm-hmm. She's like, I know this guy. You guys should should connect with him. So when I got the call to meet with them, I thought it was under the premise that they were interested in me as an artist. So I showed up with my superhero cape artist right, swagger right, on, right. expecting to be like, and again, an independent label. Right. I'm thinking of signing with dot, Def dot, Jam. Dot. Right. right. And so when I took the meeting with these guys, and, and I, 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 I was it, imagine imagine my like what when when they said well, <laughs> <laughs> how'd you do it? <laughs> like, <what>? <laughs> 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 we're, we're not interested in you as, as an artist, but we heard that you are connected to anyone and everyone on the scene. And mm-hmm. we'd like to know your network and you've got good taste and we've got an opportunity here for you to have a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. I remember I remember leaving the meeting and mm-hmm. I called my mother and um, <laughs> I said, Mom, I just got offered this opportunity to be, you know, director of and office, independent record company. But, you know, I, I'm an artist and mm-hmm. I'm this. Well, what should I do? And she said, um, do you have a job? Oh, <laughs> damn. I said, no. She said, take the job. Take the job. Take the job. I thought she was about to be like, she was going to be like an independent. No, 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 no. <laughs> flow, flow. But you never know. Um, Man, you also got me my first industry job. <laughs> a legendary concert promoter. Uh, not concert promoter, but club party promoter, sure. uh, Jessica Rosenblum. Shout out to Jessica. Was managing John Forte. Yeah. And she was also managing, at this time, this was pre-Hot 97. A little known DJ. Right. Funkmaster Flex, yep. DJ Enough, Big Cap, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Okay. Mad Wayne, uh, Biz Markie, the Flip Squad. Oh. Yeah, Flip Squad. Right? And so, John, she was also, she had one rapper, John Forte. She used to dress him in turbans. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Did Nick Cannon I, get it for I you? Would, I would, no, I'm like, she wasn't dressing me in turbans. Like. There was a photo of you in a turban with a suit on. <laughs> I'm like, that was my turban. I was, okay, I'm like, 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 nobody put me in. I'm like, I, 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 I was dressing like, me in was, turban. I was putting me yeah. <laughs> okay, like, okay, that okay. turban was my idea. I blame that on Jessica until <laughs> just this moment. No, no. Yeah, I'm like, that flavor? Like, that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the new kid's called Drip. The drip. Oh, drip. He had that was turban drip. drip. That was at Turban Drip. Um, but Jessica threw the hottest parties in New York City. She partnered with Diddy. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. there was the, you know, Funkmaster Flex at Supper Club with Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace, doing the food mm. at Supper Club. Did you know that? Anthony Bourdain was the cook at the Supper Club. I did not know that. I did his show, his last uh, No Reservations, and I read his book before I did that. And there's a whole chapter about him working at Supper Club while Flex was DJing. Wow. Stop. And I'm like, I was there. I had to, we were eating that food. So all that's happening. Mm. And, um, <laughs> you know, John is introducing me. I met uh, Biggie and Tupac because of John Forte. Mm. You know, we go going to the country club for for your birthday party with C knowledge from Diggable Planets, yeah. the poet Sarah yes. Jones, mm-hmm. my man Juju, and there was a shootout that night. Yeah, oh, no. remember that? I'm, I'm not gonna say who who shot it up. Um, I remember who shot. I it see, up. you was in the know. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, but there was a there was a situation that night. Yeah. Um, but John Forte <laughs> introduced me to my first shootout. Wow. <laughs> <Just> me. <laughs> my first hip hop club shootout. Um, oh, man. Man. But um, but yeah, I mean the good t- times. T- yeah, good times. <laughs> Talk about stress entertainment and you being the rapper on stress at that time, and just how she even like without that, there is no hot ninety seven without that. I was. Um, I remember the day I met Jessica. I was uh, in Washington Square Park, and I was with my dude uh, Ben, and. She was walking through. Um, she was walking through the park with Mar. Shout out to Mar. Shout out to Mar. I just saw Mar for the first time in years at your show last week. Mar's my sister. That's, that's that's love. That's family. And so they were walking through, and I said, to them, I said "That's white Jessica." White Jessica. <laughs> that's what she was. That's what we knew her. Right. She was white Jessica. Because we had, we had Michael Rappaport on Mike. earlier, and every all of he was around. Then he was white Mike. So that's what we called all right, the white right. people. That was so, white Jared. For, you know, right, like on the scene, right? Like, like, oh yeah, they're in the club, they're in the mix. That's white Jessica. But right. she was always at the door of, of those parties. And I said, I said, I said, Ben, man, like, like, I gotta, I gotta go talk to her. And uh, he's like, all right, I'm gonna talk to you know the girl who, who, who's next to her, and <laughs> right, right. and then you can talk to her. And I just went up to um, Jessica, and I was like, look, you know, you don't know me, it, it, it doesn't matter, but um, I know who you are, and um, I know you got some fly that's, events. That's and, an opportunity that you sought. Yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And 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 went after it, and um, and I just started rhyming. Mm. I just started rhyming. Like she didn't ask for it, but mm. she didn't stop me. So then I kept rhyming mm-hmm. while M- M- Mar was talking to Ben, mm-hmm. and then she said, "Well, you know, can you come 
by such and such tomorrow. She had but, an apartment in Manhattan, which that was impressive to me. And took yeah. cabs everywhere. Yeah. Oh, and took fancy. cabs, ev- right, right, like fancy. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, to a, to a kid, mm-hmm. and this was me in high school. This mm-hmm. wasn't even by the time that we were, you know, kind of finding out how to really make moves. This mm-hmm. was this was me away at prep school, but home for the summer, seeing somebody who I knew was really, really plugged in, tapped mm-hmm. into the scene, and just wanting to explore that, and, yeah. and explore that network. Yeah. Now you went to Phillips Exeter Academy, Mm -hmm. which correct me if I'm wrong. That's one of the most prestigious schools in the country. That's what they say. That's what they say. I went to Cheshire Academy. That's like the broke man's (laughs) Philip Exeter. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That that is not what they say. (laughs) 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 Um, But we, you know, having that experience of going to boarding school and then we connected, like we spoke in our senior year. We were in boarding school. The The park in New York City was our lifeblood. Mm-hmm. We were trying to get back to that. Mm-hmm. And the moment that you moved into NYU, you started, you was out. Like, I'm, like, I'm okay, I'm in the city. That's my home base. Quali got the apartment. I got the key. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 I'm going to the, work at the Booker basement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, just to take it back a little bit, going back to Brownsville for a second. Sure. Um, in the era where people talk about microaggressions, Talk about being in border school as a black kid in an era where microaggressions wasn't even a word. I've heard you speak about this phenomenon, so I don't want to belabor it. Mm-hmm. And when you show up mm-hmm. into spaces and you represent yourself in a way that defies the soft bigotry of low expectations, mm-hmm. the only people that it shocks are the ones that it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I found early experience with that with with, with showing up uh, and not having uh, not having those expectations mm-hmm. uh, or, or or you know we, we show up as, as kids of color and and kids think oh this is just a scholarship kid you know they they didn't they don't really deserve to to, mm-hmm. to be here they're, they're they're here because of a quota that that our institution needs to fulfill mm-hmm. so you know you, you you learn about um th- those uh those feelings, you know, r- r- wrestling with that. Um, but it was real culture shock for me. It was culture shock showing up on a path, uh, on a school path mm-hmm. and on a, and on a spiritual and a life path, uh, where so much of what I invested in, in the construct, um, was, was flipped on its head, mm. um, by these new experiences of community, mm-hmm. speaking to strangers, mm. asking for help, being yeah. vulnerable. Yeah, you, um, you remind me of, uh, is, where's Mike Tyson from? He's from Brownsville. Brownsville. Him talking about going upstate to work Customado and mm-hmm. having to navigate those different social situations. It's, it's, it's not something that, that you take for granted mm-hmm. uh, if, if, if you feel it and if you can find a way to articulate it. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was, that was always through, through our lyrics. Mm-hmm. So whether I was, w- whether we were in the parks or, 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 or whether it was just me journaling, mm-hmm. it was finding out a way to, to try to, to try to let these emotions go through mm-hmm. me. And, 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 and that was, and that was, and remains the process. Mm-hmm. Now, when you went to New Jersey to start working with Wyclef and Lauren and Praz and Jerry Wonder and the whole refugee all-star camp in the Booger basement. Which is to the Fuji. Story place. Mm. You went very, I remember when you started making beats. When I first met you, you weren't, you weren't making beats as far as I knew. Mm. I remember when you started picking it up and tinkering. You went very quickly from starting to make beats and being in studios and doing it on a more professional level to producing, you produced two songs on the score? <sighs> I produced Family Business. I produced Cowboys. I co-produced um, No Woman, No Cry. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the remix for um, Killing Me Softly with Bounty mm-hmm. that was now like, you know, I don't know, on YouTube somewhere. It's like the Hot 97 yeah. remix. Um, I did I, I did some more programming on that, on that album. So you intricately involved in this record. Yes. One of the highest selling, most critically acclaimed, forget hip hop, albums of all time. Sure, yeah. Um, did you know while working on it that that was where it was headed? I had no idea. Mm. I had no idea. Especially after Blunted on Reality, right? <laughs> <laughs> Blunted on Reality was no indication of what the score mm-hmm. would be. Right. Um, 
that's not to take anything away right, from right. London on, on reality. They were a different place. It, they were touring a Lollapalooza. And for me, it was what, another planet. It was them yeah. just just being far out and saying, you know what, we don't we don't we don't really care. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they took they took anyone outside of of of, of their immediate circle. And this is me. And I admittedly, I was not around during Blended on Reality. This is me just taking an educated yeah. guess because I was I was proximate afterwards. But I feel like Blended Reality was created in a vacuum. Mm. And but it was but it was super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but of course it was Salon's it was Salam Remy's remix of oh, Nappy Heads yeah, the Fuji Live. that kept that project <laughs> and, right. and, and and the group consequently alive mm -hmm. because that record became a hit for them. Huge hit. Yeah. 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 To this day. Mm -hmm. Um I met Lauren Hill through you, Miss Hill. Excuse me. Oh. Um, we all used to hang out, um, go to peace the movies. L. Boogie. Yeah, peace to L. Boogie, one of the most influential, iconic artists of all time. Again, with the Fugees, because the Fugees was its own, was was a thing. It's iconic and big, but she, with all due respect, Miss Hill became her own thing mm -hmm. and became her own, like in some aspects, bigger than the Fugees. Yeah. It would be silly for me to ask you if you saw saw what she was going to be because obviously, obviously did you introduced me to her but let me ask you a more interesting question did you see because she was very spiritual and very passionate did you see something in her that would lead you to believe that she would be want to leave the industry as quickly as she did I think that that is analogous to asking uh, you know a young NBA player who's just entering the league mm -hmm how soon they would envision their, their their exit from the league and no one entering the league mm -hmm. imagines their or their peers exits anytime soon mm -hmm. i never mm -hmm. i never thought about our exit strategy mm -hmm. i thought about our ascension strategy mm -hmm. but exiting was not a, a part of the equation now when she exited um i've i i don't say this too often i i don't i may have said it publicly before but I to me it's like I have this theory where if you make a certain amount of money you get a certain amount of fame you're shown what the business is really like you meet people that are adjacent to ideas that make you question your morals mm -hmm. and in order to make money in this business you at times have to do business with people that you don't like agree people who act devilish for lack of a better word I feel like when the Fuji's got to that point they were shown this and Lauren was like, Oh hell no, I'm not doing that. And went one way. And why Clef was like, I can do this. Like I can do this and keep my spirit and soul and navigate this business and still be why Clef. He went on to have solo success with carnival. You were involved in this, in this project. Um, on this song on the staying alive song was a big record from that song. They talk about you as this ladies man. Um, was that accurate at that time in your life? I aspired to be a ladies' man. <laughs> okay. 100%. Okay. But I think in order to be a ladies' man, mm -hmm. you really had to come from a place of, 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 I don't, may, maybe you're not, maybe you're not, but like, like, so what did, it, what, what did it mean for me to be a ladies' man? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to be connected to a, to a lot of women. Okay. And, and, and I ended up <laughs> that being, that sounds fair. I ended up being connected to a lot of women. Right. But, you know, not in a way that 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 always made me feel great about mm -hmm. those connections, and 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 that made them feel great about those connections. Because, you know, being connected is one thing, mm -hmm. but connections absent, mm -hmm. um, absent, uh, absent the language mm -hmm. beyond beyond physical connectivity, beyond, um, is, is vacuous, mm -hmm. right? And so that became a thing for me, a, mm -hmm. a sort of self-fulfilling, like, I know how to do this, 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 really not not progressing <laughs> mm -hmm. in any sort of relationship dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. And not to put the cart before the horse, um, you know, imagine at, at 25 in the in the sort of prime of, of, of your, your, your ladies' man prowess when you mm -hmm. get snatched from the world and they say, well, now we're going to put you in federal prison for 14 joints. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so now you don't have the opportunity to cultivate, well, what is it like to be in a relationship and, and to learn how to argue? And it's, it's, it's just suspended. Right. Yeah. I want to I want to go back to Miss Hill for a second because I'm a huge fan. Know every word to Sister Act Two. As know, you should be. Yes. <laughs> I know all of her albums, but 
how was she back then? Like, can you just describe like how it was hanging out with her? Like what you guys used to do? Like, we want to know. I had the privilege of walking into the supper club to see the food, the, my, my first Fuji's performance, not really knowing much about them beyond the black and white video of, of Booth Bath that Jeff mm -hmm. Burroughs showed me in Jessica's office. Mm -hmm. um, Whilst, proclaim, whilst, whilst proclaiming that, that he had the future of music in his hand, Jeff Burroughs knew that mm. the Fugees would, would, okay. would, 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 would blow, undoubtedly, mm. like day one. When everyone else was scratching their heads, Jeff Burroughs knew. I went to that show, I walked in, I saw instruments on the stage, and I said to the security dude, I said, yo, I'm here for a hip hop show. I'm like, <laughs> where this? am I? Is and he's like, no, no, you're in the right place. And, and, and that, ought, you know, you weren't supposed to, you didn't. The, what to, to to fuse live instrumentation with the DJ and to mm -hmm. pull it off where what where where it didn't seem trite like mm -hmm. was was astounding. So I love that show. I stood on the procession line um, to meet them that night to shake their hand and say you know who I was. And that was the first time I, I met L. And we spoke. We had a sidebar in the middle of their meet and greet uh, in New York for seven to ten minutes, which is a long time to speak to a. a Oh yeah, you know I'm I'm just coming from the crowd, but we I, I say that to say that we 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 had so much in common. We 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 resonated. We 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 clicked. Um, we knew we we um we'd make good company as it were, and we became fast friends. You know, so L was um uh, somebody I looked up to, uh, somebody that um, I respected tremendously. Um, Somebody who I saw as a creative uh, sparring partner, mm -hmm. somebody that I could get in the ring with, mm -hmm. and 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 we go blow for blow, toe to toe. That was her thing. She yeah. used to te yeah. uh, text. I don't know if we were texting back then. Texting? No, 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 no. We wouldn't. We wouldn't text. I would, I I remember this. I would I would call her from a landline, mm -hmm. and I I would just recite. I would rhymes. I would I would yeah. just say my rhymes. I play a beat in the background. Um, or else I'd just go acapella, but mm -hmm. usually I'd have a beat, beat in the background just to give a, and, 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 yeah. she, and she's like, I'm in Hawaii right now. I'm, I'm doing a show in 20 minutes and yeah, yeah. rhyme for rhyme. I recall, just going back to what you were saying about vacuous, mm. I recall running into you at a Wyclef show in London and you were on stage and the show was, you know, Wyclef has this amazing carnival-like show, you know, it's just jumping all around. Sure. He's on beast shoulders and, you know what I'm saying, doing all that. And you had two drinks, you were double-fisted. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's going on, man? He was like, I'm not having a good time. Mm. And that sat with me for a long time because, you know, you're one of my best friends. And at that time, we weren't even seeing each other that much. Mm -hmm. I'd run into you at a party here, an event there. We, we, were, we were becoming industry friends. And I remember being at this show. I mean, maybe Corey Smith was with me. I remember leaving it like, man, I'm not at that level. I'm not on stage with Wyclef. You know, they seem like they they seem like they're having a good time. And you told me you weren't. Mm. Do you remember this? I don't. Okay. I don't. But it doesn't surprise me. Mm. I think I, I, I have um I know I have memories of when my relationship with the the business of the industry um became uh, well, well, when that honeymoon period was over, right? Mm -hmm. When, when, when you realized that what you were doing was a lot more transactional mm -hmm. than, than than not, and so you know, it's well, I'm sick. Nobody gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. Work. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm I'm feeling sad. Nobody cares. Work. Um. So the exchange, you know, me showing up was not because anybody cared. It was because, well, you know, you 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 were there to represent. Um, something for that bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, so play a position, and that and and and, and that reality hit mm -hmm. me hit me, you know, a, a, around that time mm -hmm. when, when when we saw each other, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was a, a rude awakening, mm -hmm. a rude awakening, right? Something that so, so, something that you 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 work so long for, and 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 you finally. I don't know if if it was at the point yet when we went when we went back to um to Haiti, like there were half a million people in Haiti showing up for, for that show. There were half a million people at the San Remo Festival in 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 Italy, mm -hmm. right? And when you're telling a half million people to throw their hands in the air and they do that, you feel like you have some worth. Mm -hmm. And then when you get home and you don't feel like you have much worth at all. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, that's a dichotomy that mm. uh, is, is is profoundly difficult to uh, 
you know, you, you, you got to wrestle with it. And, 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 you know, I was, I was doing my wrestling. Wow. Um, now you mentioned in telling the story, you mentioned your arrest. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2000, you were arrested at Newark airport with $1.4 million worth of liquid cocaine. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you get from the Fuji's to that moment? And can you describe and walk us through that moment? Sure. Um, so Fuji's huge success, mm -hmm. plaques awarded. I'm being groomed for my solo project, um, which comes out in '97. You're I talking think. about Polysai. Polysai. Yeah, Polysai. So that comes out. Um, a whole bunch of things happen within the label system. Uh, my, my product manager is. is you know, I don't know if she's fired or. Um, transition the week before the, the, the album comes out. Uh, uh, the short of it is that it's a brick, right? It, it critical uh, acclaim, commercial disappointment, all in all around 80,000 copies sold. So yeah, 80,000 copies now is a huge success. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So the industry has completely changed. <laughs> right, 80,000 copies, you know, after yeah. after the score, after, um, right. after you know, Clef's, uh, you know, Carnival and Staying Alive is a brick. Right. Um, so for me, instead of so instead of instead of kind of looking in the mirror and, and self-examining, saying, "Well, you know, what, what can what can we do to to, to write this ship?" I didn't look in the mirror mm. at all. Mm. I, I looked everywhere but except the mirror, the mirror wow. but the mirror. And I said, "You know, everyone around me, from from management, probably down, you know, you know as close to to flow, mm. failed me, mm. right? In, in 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 my in what would be my my, my first real disappointment." arguably in life, mm. right? Like mm -hmm. this, this this brick where somebody's like, well, no, you know what? You're not as talented as you think you are. Mm. You, you, you're not as as smart. You're not as fly. You're not as dot, dot, dot. Right. Um, and Poli Sci had DMX on it. You know, <laughs> DMX, Fat, Fat Joe. Joe, like like so. So for me, Poli Sci was like formulaic. I was yeah. like, I'm ticking Production boxes. Production was slick. I'm, yeah, because <laughs> the video was crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like we had budgets. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. I'm I, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Like at, at the end of the day, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm showing up to you know these studios mm -hmm. at, at, at 10 p.m. But I was supposed to be there at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then not leaving until you know maybe. T so <sighs> thinking that I was. Thinking that I was, you know, in my in, in my zone, in my mode, um, but I created that album in a vacuum. Like I created that album in a mm -hmm. vacuum. I didn't I, I didn't ask many people for for ears or well, what do you think? I was like, I, I know this is fresh, right? So I just I brought people in, mm -hmm. but I didn't do too much too much outreach. Um, so that you know that happened, mm -hmm. and and I went up to the label and I voiced my frustrations. <laughs> in fine fashion in fine in fine, in fine eloquent <laughs> um, un inoffensive fashion right <laughs> um, which led to me getting dropped from the label mm -hmm. um, which I thought was again divine intervention I said that's fine you want to drop me that's cool I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this on my own you know and I, I, as I tell this story I said the universe conspires to help the dreamer right it, has a, mm -hmm. it gives you what you want um, so that coincided with me meeting an individual who had an operation uh, and uh he said, well, hey, you know, you're connected to a lot of people. Uh, I would love for your people to meet my people. And that uh, led to me involving myself in that in that operation, mm -hmm. um, being a, a middleman, connecting uh, him to to couriers to mm -hmm. transport mm -hmm. whatever needed transporter. Um, and that house of cards fell. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't me signing up to that to <laughs> all of a sudden change professions. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, all right, well, right. now, now I'm going to do... I was compartmentalizing and justifying it because I was going into the studio. I was I, I, I was using whatever I had to. I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to make this. This is how much your art meant to you. It was I, I have Everything. to create. Yeah, and, I, and I've got to get this out. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to take these risks. Um, and, and I took those risks. And uh, one day at Newark uh, Airport, when I went to pick up two of the couriers, uh, which was something that I'd never done. Uh, up until that point, I, I, I was, again, I was a middleman. I was hands off. Um, what I didn't realize as I was picking them up was that I was going into a, a controlled delivery. Uh, it was a, it was a sting. Um, they were cooperating with the feds. I had no, I didn't know um, our conversations uh, from the time that, 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 that they were apprehended were recorded. Mm -hmm. um, 
And when they picked me up, they just bagged me. Everything, time stood still that day. Um, and then, you know, everything changed. Um, you got sentenced to 14 years. Yeah, 168 months. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that, for, uh, the only the, and, and the reason and it's, it's important. Well, mm-hmm. I say that because that's how it's worded yeah. in, mm-hmm. in, in your sentencing. Right. So you've got to do that calculation, you know, kind of Johnny on the spot. Mm-hmm. And, and if you're if you're pretty good with with, with math, you know, mm-hmm. the, the judge doesn't say 14 years. The judge says, you know, you, you, your, your guideline range is 168 months to 210 months. Wow. And so you know, so I was on the bottom. I was on the bottom end of my guideline. What's that like for people who have never faced that? The idea. At this point, you're on the other side of it now. But at this point, what was that like to be like, okay, for at least 14 years, I have to not do what I want to do and I have to have be limited in this way that most people are never going to have to face? What was, was that? How daunting was that? I didn't surrender to the idea of being incarcerated for 14 years until I was probably three and a half to four years into my sentence wow. and that was when I'd already and, and that was when I lost my last appeal mm. because up until you that still point fighting fighting right fighting. I remember that I was fighting yeah I mean you, you you're you part of that fight yeah. you know so so people reached out and and letters and and so I had people from 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 the time I, I was sentenced uh shout out to Carly Simon shout out to Carly know, Simon activating activating networks on my behalf mm-hmm. uh to galvanize uh, uh support to, to to bring me home but it wasn't until I lost my writ of cert um which was uh 2255 if I'm not mistaken uh mm-hmm. that takes you up to the, the the Supreme Court I know that somebody would call me out in the comments if I if I got this wrong so I I, I wholly apologize um but it wasn't until I lost my, 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 my writ of cert for the Supreme Court and I was speaking to my then girlfriend and, and you know, she said, you know, did you hear what I said? I said, yeah, you said, you said we lost. Mm. And she was in tears. She's like, mm. you know, but I'm on a phone line and I just heard that mm-hmm. we lost and that 10 other dudes who waiting to get on the phone to speak to their friends and family. Yeah. So that was, that was, and, and at that point that was like, oh, so my release date is, 2014 wow. right but by that point time what doing time mm-hmm. wasn't new to me mm-hmm. I was I was well into mm-hmm. you know the, the sentence so I had my community mm-hmm. I had a sense of self mm-hmm. um I had my my, my, my programming um they, they, they were things that I, I I was doing in the name of of coming home but what that did what that realization did for me was it fomented a resolve to come home with something to show for Mm -hmm. the time Mm -hmm. I said well if I'm not coming home to 2014 I'm not going to be in the same state or the same condition that I was in 2001 that's right when I entered and that um that coincided with me speaking to Professor Charles Ogletree who was at Harvard who was a mentor to me throughout my incarceration and Professor Ogletree said you know John I want you to apply to Harvard and um I applied to Harvard uh, they did not uh, accept me. Um, and I called up Tree and I said, Tree, you know, I went through the whole process. Like a person mm-hmm. came from, mm-hmm. from Harvard to interview me in the visiting room. And, mm-hmm. and we, we did the application and the spring came and m- m- mail call happened. And, you know, it was a rejection letter from Harvard. So mm-hmm. I called up Tree and I, I was I was I was floored. And I said, you know, I, I, I did this. I did what you said. And they, they still said no. And uh, and and it was Tree's encouragement that it, No, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep Mm. going. So I applied um, to the London School of Economics and the London School of Economics accepted me. And I I began my, 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 you know, degree with them, um, Mm. which would be in in politics and international relations. Mm. Um, It was, I really gave a shit about the world Mm -hmm. when I was removed from it, when I was told I couldn't participate in it. How did you, when you say you went to college and prison for people that don't know, how, how does that process go? Like, what, what do you do? Because obviously you can't go to classes. And I'm glad you asked that question. When I went to, well, I have to work with the education department. I had to work with the education department at, at the facility that I, that I um, was. I had to work with them on my application to Harvard. And they were aware of my rejection. And then when I went back to them and I said, well, I'm going to apply next to the London School of Economics. And the counselor there said, 
don't you think you're aiming a bit too high? We have a community college just up the road that offers an HVAC mm -hmm. program where you can be certified and, you know, call it 60 to 90 days. Um, and I said, with all due respect, is that what you would tell your children? Mm. With, with reluctance, she pushed through this application because she thought that, that this was an exercise in futility. So I, I give you that. I, I say that to illustrate a point that that system is not designed to work with you, to reform you, to rehabilitate you um, to the best of their and perhaps your capability, right? It, it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it becomes inconvenient to how things are running, to, 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 to what works for, for them because, because it's a construct in, in motion that, that has a bottom line that generates profit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you've, you're not gonna get much support. So if, if, if I were doing that exercise, not as John Forte, not as having Talib Kweli come to visit me two weeks later, Right? Having people who are on the outside be, 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 be witnesses to the fact that we have a friend in there. We have a family member in there. So we're watching you, right? Mm -hmm. so, so my people on the outside was a constant check. It was like, all right, well, we can, we can shake John, but we can only shake him so much because maybe, maybe there might be some folks who, 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 might, yeah. who might remind, you know, like, like we're, we're watching. Right. You know? That's very important for you to say, especially mm -hmm. for people, especially people of color, marginalized people, poor people. We disproportionately have people locked up in jail. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the visitations is so important. Um, but I want to thank you for, you know, having me visit you. Because I'm, for all intents and purposes, a lot more free than you are at this point when I'm going to visit you. And I remember the first time I went to visit you, it was it was this heavy weight, like, oh, man, like, I hope I can, I hope I'm strong enough mm -hmm. to lift John's spirit, whatever he's going through. And when I left, I was like, oh, shit, I feel light. Mm -hmm. I feel like my spirit is lifted. And I was so happy when you when you when you just said that you were gonna come, and I I, I said I said to my, I was like, yo man, Kwai's gonna come, man. He's going. The fact that you that you took that that you made that that trip, man, it meant the world to me. Oh man, man. it meant and, the and world you, to me too. To show up, mm -hmm. to show up, and and there are a lot of folks who want to show up, mm -hmm. but for what they they can't they can't get there. It's not they don't make it easy. They right. don't make it easy for you to yeah. jump through those hoops and for you to for you to make those visits. Yeah. And and even though it says in the in, in, in the, you know we're here to help keep communities you know mm -hmm. safe and 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 to, like no, it's not within their uh, I don't they're not they, they don't have marching orders to, to to keep us as connected as we want to be yeah yeah um before you went in you recorded I Forte I John I John excuse me I John um yo I'm just I'm getting ready to re-release that really it's a brilliant album brother dude on the way here mm -hmm. I get a call from JK shout out to JK who co-produced that record mm -hmm. with me who was like yo I just got a new distribution deal with so and so uh I'm like yo we should put out I John again and mm -hmm. so we're going to put out I John again we're going to yeah it didn't get what it was supposed to get that's okay. But that's okay that's because okay. because of this moment now. Yeah. Because it's back. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, um, that's beautiful. Herbie Hancock's on this album. Yeah, yeah. A different album than the DMX album. You know what I'm saying? It's a very, very different album. Very different John. Very yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why it's called I John. Because I John. the first album was Forte Polystyle. Right. This is me. This is industry Forte. Mm -hmm. Now it's I John. It's, it's, it's I. You recorded that knowing that you were going away for what you thought was going to be 14 years at this point. I John, who I'm also your brother and companion. Um, it's from the Bible. I, when, when John was relegated to the island of Patmos mm. and when he wrote Letters Home, mm. I, John. And this was me thinking about I, John. It was the threat of having to write those letters from prison because that's how I would begin. Mm -hmm. That's how I'd begin my letters from prison if I, if I went there. I, John, who am also your brother and companion. Mm. Um, so I wrote that album, recorded that album, collaborated on that album with the existential fear, threat, um, reality, uh, probability that, um, th 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 that it would be my last it. project for yeah. some time. Yeah. Yes. Um, Carly Simon is on that album. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk about your relationship with Carly Simon yeah. and Ben Taylor. Yes. Carly Simon I, called me. That's how I got back in touch with you. Mm. Cause I didn't know how to do it. I was in the mall. I was in Kings Plaza in yeah. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I think I was Christmas shopping. And I get a call. It's like, it's Carly Simon. And it's, I'm like, oh, shit. Carly Simon called me. I'm, I'm kind of a big deal. You know? yeah. um, 
but she was very passionate. This is our first conversation we ever had about you and getting you out. And um, tell me how you met Ben and met Carly Simon and what that experience of going to Martha's Vineyard and spending time with them, because I feel like your story is a story of relationships. And Ben Taylor is Carly Simon's son. Yes, yes. We are deeply connected long before and after we ever meet. Mm. I knew his cousin, Liz, who's actually James Taylor's uh, niece. Mm -hmm. It would be years later with uh, with I. Oh, I'm sorry, with, with, with Poli Sci, all nearly being released. That my my, my friend Karen Rackman um, called me up and said, I, 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 "There's this guy that, that that you need to you need to meet. You absolutely love him." Karen was the uh, executive producer of of the Pulp Fiction soundtrack, among okay. other things. And I ended up being on the Office Space soundtrack working mm -hmm. um, with, with, with Karen. Um, so she puts me, or in, 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 I don't even know, she didn't even put me in contact with Ben. She sent me his cassette. She sent me a cassette tape uh, and I couldn't get past the first song. Mm. I could not get past the first, and I had, I just re rewound it, rewound it. And I called up Karen, I said, I can't get past the first song, it's that good. Mm. I'd really, really love to meet him. And she's I mean, like, oh, yeah. well, she's like, yeah, he's he, he, he's in New York right now. And um, and I, I, I went up uh, uptown, up west side and uh, scooped him up. Uh, and I remember I was driving uptown, I was listening to Sarah McLaughlin's new album. Mm. And he told me later that he was listening to Jay's new album. <laughs> right? So I'm listening to Sarah McLaughlin, right. going to pick him up. And he's listening right. to Jay's album as I'm, as I'm picking him up. Um, so suffice it, to, suffice it to say, even though, you know, Ben was from this completely different world and identified as a singer songwriter, you know, the son of, of James Taylor, Carly, Carly Simon, two of the best to ever do it. Right. 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 And, and which has and, to be a lot of pressure on him as an artist. 100%. Yeah. And they had the courage to say like, oh, I'm, and he was preparing to his solo, mm -hmm. his, his debut album and was, you know, uh, and we, we were new friends. And so he would, he would look to me as, you know, for counsel and guidance and just, he cared about my ear and my input. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Carly Simon lived in the vineyard next door to Orrin Hatch? No. Okay. No. I'm wrong. Um, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is an incorrect <laughs> statement. <laughs> um, while I was away, Car Carly and all of her, and all of her outreach, 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 because there were a number of leads, which is why, you know, throughout, throughout the years, you know, three and a half years before I felt that, that yeah, yeah, right, because I'm always checking in and, oh, well, this looks really promising mm -hmm. and, you know, cautiously optimistic. And like, she'd be on the Today Show promoting a new album and then would, would say free John Forte. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you've got 15 seconds on NBC to promote your new album. And, and, and she kept me in the mix. Yeah. Kept me in the mix. Never stopped. And she she got the attention of, of, of Orrin Hatch okay. and sent him. Orrin Hatch is a Republican senator from Pennsylvania. Utah. I'm I'm all wrong today. It, it's all right. It happens. You know what? I'm gonna tell you what it is. You're my friend, so I didn't really do any real research. <laughs> what is it? Keep it real. Yes. Here the people's like, party. Like, like, Google. I don't they need that. Notes. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so Orrin Hatch. Yes. Um, an unlikely, um, unlikely ally. Yeah. An unlikely ally. Because he's not known for his progressive approach to the world. No. No, he's not. No. But he took a liking to you and your situation. I'm going to try, I'm going I'm to attempt another thing that I, I'm going to attempt. Okay. If I get this one wrong, I get fired. All right. <laughs> no, because then I get fired. Okay, so okay. <laughs> Orrin Hatch likes to play guitar. Um, I don't, I don't actually know if, 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 if he likes to play guitar. <laughs> Um, Apparently, I need to hang out with you more. This <laughs> I don't know if he likes to play guitar, but but um, he's a he's a songwriter. He's a songwriter. Okay, yes. so that's what it was. Yes. He 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 appreciated your musical chops. Y'all yes. y'all y'all would have musical conversations. Not not directly. Okay, not directly. I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 why don't you tell me? I, why, I'm trying to tell the story. Why don't you tell me, Carly, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> who I who I refer to as Mama C, mm -hmm. uh, my, my my spiritual godmother. Mm -hmm. uh, she introduced him to my music. Okay. And and through that, um, cult, uh, cultivated an awareness about mm -hmm. me uh, in him that led him to see my cause as one uh, that he could he, he could get behind. Um, 
you know, much to the chagrin of of of, of, of some of, of his constituents at, right. at, at the time. You know, it, it was unpopular to align yourself with um, in any shape, form, or fashion, even the, the, the mere suggestion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, what, 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 what's in it for him? Right. Yeah. And he was able to somehow get your situation to the ear of George Bush? I don't know. I don't know if, if that was the case directly, but mm-hmm. I don't think it was lost on anyone who, who paid attention mm-hmm. um, the significance of, 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 of his support. Right. Um, because he's a, he's, he's such a, a senior or, you know, a, mm-hmm. a, a senior ranking member right. of, uh, of the Senate. And yeah. you were pardoned by George Bush. Uh, my, my sentence was commuted. Commuted. So I received executive clemency, okay. which is the, 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 the second best thing to a, a pardon. Right. So mm-hmm. while my conviction stands, uh, what George W. Bush did when when you put my names on that list of 11 prior mm-hmm. to leaving office. Was he said that your your time in in in, in prison is done, um, but I came home with five years of supervised release, mm-hmm. um, and and probation mm-hmm. and, and a conviction still on my record. But but I, mm-hmm. I came home early. Now I got to tell you, um, about a year before that happened, I had gone to visit you, mm-hmm. and you said this to me. You said, "I think this part and this could c- commute of this sentence from George Bush is looking like a possibility, mm. looking like it might happen." Mm. And I went back around the way and I said, John has lost his motherfucking life. <laughs> <laughs> I told Rubik's and Juju and I said, I don't know. We got to check on our boy. <laughs> He's, He's talking about it. George Bush. You're going to let him out of prison. I don't, where is he getting this George from? Bush doesn't like black people. And this is how I found out. I found out I'll like. say word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, it was, hey, it made the news. Hey. I think I heard it on like Hot 97. I was like, he was telling the truth. <laughs> He was this motherfucker, John Forte, hey. was telling the truth. Mm. But again, it's like nothing was going to stop you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm I'm so happy you came home. Um, Thank you, brother. It was, it was one of the best moments of my life when you came home. Mine too. I'm sure. You know? Mine too. And we went in the studio. And meet, maybe the, was it the next day? It was the next day. The wow. next day we went in the studio. The next day. We did Homecoming, Homecoming together. Yeah. Looked that up. We did a video while we were recording while this While we were song. doing it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good times. Mm-hmm. Good times. Now, obviously, George Bush and Orrin Hatch, for that matter, are very polarizing figures. Mm. Um, I'm not going to ask you whether or not you agree with their politic. Mm. Um, I don't feel like that's what this your story is about. Um, but does it come up at all, the fact that people see Orrin Hatch and George Bush as these right-wing conservatives? People consider them racist. People, uh, Kanye West back then Clearly, he's flipped the script a little bit recently. But back then, he was saying George Bush don't care about black people. Um, does that come up in your story when you have to tell it people's how people see these these politicians? I think that a 2020 lens mm-hmm. is is a lot different than a 2010 lens, a 2012 lens, mm-hmm. a 2016 lens. Mm-hmm. A lens in 2020, looking back at those times, I mean... For example, Obama's presidency, right? I remember looking at, I don't know if it was front page news, but the the scandal that it was that he put his feet up on the desk. Mm-hmm. The sca- How dare he disrespect the office of the presidency and the Oval Office and he put his feet up on the desk. So you just might say that there was a different standard mm-hmm. of, of, of judgment, mm-hmm. um, of shock mm-hmm. uh, value, it doesn't come up often now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think that, uh, and I think that that's probably because of what you alluded to earlier, right? Like, yes, it's a component of my story, but um, oh, and I've got, I've got, a, I've got political views. Mm-hmm. But, Obviously, you do one hundred percent. But I, 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 you know, I could be very, very wrong. I, I, I think that the what I've been held to, the standard that I've been held to is how I've chosen to, to spend each day and what I've done with, with my time, mm-hmm. right? And I was, I, was, I was trying to testify 
um, what I was capable of doing with my time if given the opportunity to do that, if, if given the, you know, the second chance. Mm -hmm. Because while I was in prison, it wasn't like I, I was doing idle time. Like, yeah, I was going back to, to school, but um, we were doing a lot of work inside mm -hmm. to be better, mm -hmm. to do, and it wasn't just me. I had brothers in arms and, 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 and we were working every day mm -hmm. to, 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 to be more refined, to, 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 to find our dignity, to find our grace and, 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 and whatever that, that, that meant. Right. And so when I was given that shot, when I was given that, that, that second chance, like it was fucking awesome. Mm. But was it enough? Like in the context of how many other people walked on that, walked on that road with me, took the same steps, mm -hmm. did, did, did the same things, lived as upright as, as they possibly could. Right. And by your, you've lived a, a blessed life in many ways. You created opportunities that weren't there. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened to you was partially a result of opportunities that you created that other people may not have the opportunity to even create. Mm -hmm. My reliance on community, mm -hmm. this 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 theme, um, I've, I've I've known since since I could since I could remember right like we're not alone. I'm um, I can't do this alone, mm -hmm. um, and it's all it, it, yes. It is a recurring theme. It is it's it's find your team. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's find your team. Get aligned. And 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 make your mark, right? Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until years later that that I would really kind of be consumed with, um, or have to surrender and accept the transient nature of all things, and and you know that's something that I wrestle with now as a parent, mm -hmm. and you know everything is kind of fleeting, but that doesn't make brushing your teeth any less worth right. doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, right? You, you, like they, they, they're they're just boxes that that are worth ticking while you're alive and 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 and, and deeds worth doing. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Tamika Mallory. I am. But, I uh, Tamika. Peace, shout out peace to Tamika, Tamika Mallory. Shout out to Tamika Word Mallory. Up. Tamika, I, you have an open invite to come to our show as well. You need I more mean, women on this show, brother. And I don't like using hey. like, 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 like suggestive language uh -huh. about you need, but you need more women okay. on this show. I'm, a, I'm with and, that. And, and so we just did Gina. Uh, shout out to Gina. Yeah, she was here earlier. Peace. And, uh, you know, we, 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 that's something that was interesting about you saying that. That is something that we come into the show. That's the reason I even have Jasmine as a co host. Oh, that, checking that, the box, baby. Checking the boxes. <laughs> checking all the boxes. <laughs> but we, that's something that's interesting that, that we have actively tried to pursue. Uh, this audience of this show, they, you know, get, shout out to the game. You know, almost 300,000 people watched the game interview. About 8,000 people have watched the Patrice Colores, who's founded Black Lives Matter. So, um, you know, we are going to we're going to keep bringing the women the voices that are important regardless of whether or not the numbers are there but for people watching the show when we bring women on spread the word mm -hmm. so we can get those numbers up but anyway go ahead yes please okay right, tamika. so tamika mallory is very uh she she's been uh working with uh mississippi prison parchment and uh you know their harsh conditions and bringing light to that and everything what have you done since You've been out of prison for like advocacy for change in Nothing. the system. Nothing. I'm kidding. Oh, I was like, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> because it's just. I, you, did, I did my part. <laughs> no, I've, I I've, got out. <laughs> no, I've, 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 I've done. It's, it's a, it's a fantastic question, and you know, I don't have the. I don't have my my, my calendar over the last eleven years of being home, but I will tell you, like, I've made a concerted effort to do what I could, when I could. I saw a picture of you with Obama. That was prison reform work, right? Yeah. 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 Man, since coming home, like I've, I've shown up and, and, and spoken to judges. I've spoken to lawyers. Wow. I've gone back in the prisons. I've gone to juvenile facilities. I've um, gone to DC. Uh, I've taught at schools. What I've nurtured, I've, I've nurtured my relationships knowing that that they're not for naught right so i don't have um i don't have a 90 day plan i don't have a 100 day plan or an objective or to say this year i'd like to do such and such w within the realm of prison reform mm -hmm. but i know that i'm showing up for prison reform mm -hmm. i know i'm showing up for criminal justice reform i know i'm showing up for voting rights mm -hmm. i know i'm showing up for women i know i'm showing up for my daughter i know that as a black man within north america my life is predicated on activity and awareness and 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 
<laughs> um, I mean, just breathing, mm -hmm. just being here, just having this conversation with you. What am I doing? We're, 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 we're having this conversation in a public space in a, in a, in a platform that, 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 that you've cultivated. So irrespective of, like you said, the metrics of the numbers of how many views, mm -hmm. you create this and you put this out there and you let the universe do what it does. That's right. Right? Because there is, there is something afoot. There is something happening. Whether we're too close or not to see it is up to us, you know. But there's oh, something God. happening. I brought up the Orrin Hatch. I still, I, in my head, I have this vision of seeing Orrin Hatch play a guitar somewhere. So maybe that's where I got that from. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going back, going back to the guitar. <laughs> because you said something in an interview that was very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. You said, while you were living your best life being an industry super rapper, you wanted to learn how to play the guitar, but you didn't have the time. But then the time was provided by the universe. Mm. And you didn't know how it was going to be provided, but it was provided. You learned the guitar while you were locked up. Um, since you got out, you've traveled the world and took this guitar all over the world. Um, what is it about the guitar that's so special? And the guitar, much like me finding my, my singing voice on I, John, mm -hmm. was uh, an integral tool in my artistic liberation. Mm. The guitar provided me very selfishly with an autonomy and an ability to, to show up and to be to be all the music mm -hmm. I, I, I need, all the all the percussion mm -hmm. I, I, I need uh, in order to support me in in, in telling that story, right? Which is a song. And prior to that. Prior to learning the, the, the guitar, even though I had um, musical abilities with being able to play the violin and 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 and, and some ability to, to to chord that out on on a keyboard without necessarily having the theory as, as my bass, but prior to the guitar, I had to always ask somebody to, hey, can you can you be at three o'clock because I need some support. I'm gonna can you? or mm -hmm. worse, like have a backing track, mm -hmm. which for me felt like like um. Oh man, well it's 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 close to the experience, but 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 not quite mm. how I, how I want it to be. The studio is an imitation, it, the best possible imitation, uh, but an imitation of what we do on stage. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so, you know, there was also something really um, confining mm -hmm. about you know when you do have a backing track. But you've got to lock into you know the, the vocals, and that's got to mm -hmm. be tight. Like like that becomes a mathematical performance to to a to to, to a degree. And if you if you if you fail if, if you fall off off the tracks on that, it could be it could be cataclysmic. Right. But if you are accompanying yourself, it does. If I'm slowing down, well, I can I can go as slow as I want. I can go as fast as I want to, because I'm I'm you know. Mm. So um, the guitar was uh, was. Uh, yeah, very, very liberating, and 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 and, and, and me as a singer songwriter, me as a, as a deeply rooted in hip hop, yeah. um, but being able to to, to have the gu the guitar as an intimate uh, um, um, part of, of my craft has been rewarding. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's been great. This experience with the guitar has mm. led you to Rhythm Drive, Rhythm Drive, which is a new album, Rhythm Drive, the new album, yeah. All just not all, but mostly you accompanying accompanying yourself on guitar. Mm -hmm. What made you want to make the album like that? I've spent the last eleven years of being home, singing, cultivating, crafting the songs on on rhythm drive, mm -hmm. and performing them in in, 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 in some in, in some cases. I had the pleasure of performing a song with you because I'm featured on this album. That's right. That's shout right. out to me. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to, to Luke Paul. Yeah, I had the yeah. pleasure of performing with you recently yeah. um, in an intimate space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But please continue. And, 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 and that's right. I mean, so, 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 so Rhythm Drive for me is, it's the name of, 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 of the album, but it's, uh, I'd also love for it to be the name of the sound that mm -hmm. I aspired to capture, which is really intimate, which should sound like I'm just singing this or performing this for you. Like oh, no you. matter how many people are in the room. Going right? back to those conversations you were having with Lauren. Yeah. And Michelle. Right. It's like this it it, it there's a vulnerability there. There's mm -hmm. a there's a, a, a you know, um, I'm not playing any click tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just me. It's me slowing, slowing down and speeding up. And, um, oh man, but I love it. And, and so, and right. so, 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 so rhythm drive for me is, is a genre. Like it's a genre. It's, you know, it's, it's, 
it's spacious, it's sparse. And while there might not be a drummer there, there's no shortage of rhythm because mm -hmm. it's all implied. It's almost like you're, you're it's almost like you're hearing the other voices, the mm -hmm. other elements in the space. Right. In a, in a particularly noisy, noisy time. Mm -hmm. Right. There is there's a, 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 a there's a lot of space on this project that excites me because it, it, I think it just leaves room for whoever's experiencing it to experience it. I'm so happy I'm working with you on this project. Um, Thank you. You know, shout Thank out to you. my team at Javoti Media and shout out, shout out to John Forte's team. Um, you and I started our career together and then we sort of went like this mm -hmm. and we had these completely different journeys and we were seeing each other every once in a while, but we didn't really work together in this time when you were doing Fuji stuff, I'm doing Get By. We weren't working together. We weren't yeah. hanging out, spending time. Yeah. Then you had this whole journey where you went away, you came back, and now we're working together a lot more closer, closely. Um, we're spending a lot more time together and the music is bringing us together. And I just feel like it's the combination of something, it's just exactly how it's supposed to be. And I'm very excited and happy to be working with you on it. Thank you, brother. Um, Thank you. It reminds me of um, seeing that video of a, was it DMX birthday party? Is someone's some event. You're, it's on YouTube, it's John Forte, it's Cannabis. Mike, no, it's cannabis. Oh, Mike Geronimo. It's oh, Mike Geronimo. No. Yeah, cannabis. cannabis uh, big pun. Big pun. Yeah. Yasin Bay. Yeah. This is the most diverse group of New York MCs that you could probably mm -hmm. get sit around the table. And that in that era, we were all preparing. I wasn't there, but I was there in spirit. Yes. But we were all as up and coming MCs preparing to be in the industry to put out records. So y'all were comparing verses that y'all wrote, but that at that point. Most of us didn't come from having studios. So you just had verses ready to go mm -hmm. in case you got to a mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, check this one out. And mm -hmm. this one, it's, it's a very well-written, well-crafted verse that has no placement. And we all had these verses just in our head, ready to go at any given time. Tell mm -hmm. me, what's the beat sound like? I got one for that. Right. But y'all did was doing that with no beat. Mm -hmm. um, describe that moment of that videotape. I didn't realize how... Um important mm -hmm. that 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 moment would be it was be. like that moment is like listening to stretch and bob and hearing <laughs> big l and jay-z rhyme it's one of those moments. I, I, I think so I, I think so and 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 the and, and the only reason why i say that is because um you know when i was gone for seven plus years the world changed mm -hmm. right um there was no iphone when I was when at home, so I, I came home and, and was introduced to the iPhone, BlackBerry, or or, or, or really these smart devices, mm -hmm. um, and then the notion of giving away your music oh, yeah. that was that was yeah. like like what? Yeah. I, ca I, I came home in two thousand and eight, and they were like, yeah, so um, we just we just we just give away the project. What? <laughs> you, 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 who, who, who pays you? <laughs> right. Well, no, nah, it's not really, it doesn't really work like that. How does it work and who's right. working? It right. was, it was, it was a big shock, right? So the, the monetization aspect of, of, of what we did and how we did that mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, changed. That's right. That's right. The fact that we're here now with the opportunity to break bread, to, um, to influence, to create mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. uh, Fortunately, like I can look at you as a forty-something-year-old artist, and 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 like and this isn't our first rodeo. Like we, right. we 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 paid our we know how to do this. Yeah, right. Um, but if but if but if nothing else, I think that to rest our hats on the fact that our efforts were not in vain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were hanging out, but we were learning. You That's know, right. we we were we, we we were getting we were getting lifted, but we were getting inspired and teaching and teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And learning about our, our own strengths and our own capabilities to to to, to contribute, um, so that moment of sitting around with Torrey interviewing us didn't really strike me as 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 profound as um, maybe it is until I saw people hitting. It was like, oh, people are you know they, they, they're tagging me in the video and they're tagging the moment right. and, and 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 this is and all new with the social media like mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're being yeah. tagged in this, and bring tagged in this new thing that's bringing you back and I'm I'm like oh I remember that moment yeah. kind of yeah we were smoking cigarettes inside a restaurant like oh, it was no. a different time old New York old New York mm -hmm. old New York um it was like two o'clock in the afternoon maybe even maybe even eleven a.m. I don't know but mm -hmm. um 
you know, we were drinking and smoking and we were all feeling like we were capable of greatness. Anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Um, do you remember <laughs> smoking with me at the Palladium? I do remember smoking with you at the Palladium. <laughs> vividly, right? Okay. Like, vividly. And I'll tell you why. Okay, because okay. it was my, it was my, call it my third panic attack. That's oh, right. No. It was my third panic attack. That's because right. I remember where my first one was, my second one. Okay. I, I remember where my second one was. I remember my, yeah, so that was my right. third panic okay, attack. Okay, okay, okay. How many and have you had? A number. But that was my third one because I, I was, was there for that one. Oh, and, and so talk about old New York. <laughs> talk about old New York when, when, you know, thousands of people with, with, with the club. Palladium like the Friday Palladium, night. 10,000 people. Funkmaster Flex every Friday night. Funkmaster and Flex and night. It, uh, oh. Palladium was like 3,000 people in that club, different floors. <laughs> Just, right, but, but right, spread out, spread, spread out. out, right? And <laughs> Flex every Friday would have a premiere artist. So it would be like Run DMC this Friday mm. or like Ice Cube or Tropical Quest. It, was, it wasn't just a regular party. Yeah. This party was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. And I smoked, we smoked mm -hmm. that night. We're smoking like nickel bags oh, of swag. We're smoking whatever we could find. It was like, like what do you have? What do you have? Reggie. Put it together oh, and, not, and, and roll it up. Not right? You guys right? are not smoking even, Reggie. Not it, was, Reggie. It, 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 it predated Less, Reggie. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I was like, I'm like, I preferred Reggie. Reggie would have been. A, yeah, it's a, like a, Reggie sprayed with a whole bunch of roast roach spray. Oh, God. Like something to activate it, right? Yeah. And um, <laughs> to activate the experience. <laughs> and, and I don't know who was on stage that night, but I remember being, Qua, we got to go. Yep. We got to go. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and you're like, we just smoke. We just. And, then, and I'm walking by people and I'm wigging out and I'm looking at me like, they know I'm high. They all know I'm high. <laughs> and, and, uh, That's was, exactly right. right. And I'm just like, you got to take me to the hospital. Kwa's like, the last place you know, you need to go or we need to go is a hospital. It'll only make things worse. I'm like, I got to do something. They're like, we're going to walk around the block. And we walked around the block. And then New York started wigging me out. Um, so yeah. So, so I do. I, 2016. I, right. Right. So 2016. Um, well, that's an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting. It's an interesting point that you bring up mm -hmm. because I don't want to. I, I don't want to harp on it. But I knew even back then, when I was sort of being drawn or, mm -hmm. or, or called or attracted to to to, to cannabis, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to cultivate a relationship with it okay. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, or for a number of reasons. Uh, when I was when I was you know, uh, it, it, it just was it just wasn't the right time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the right time, and I was having an adverse reaction to mm -hmm. it, and I was just like. I never counted it out. I, ne I never said, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. I was just like, now is just not the time. Okay, okay. So fast forward. We were smoking some shitty weed too. Facts. You have to get some Facts. loud. Oh. <laughs> there was no loud. Yeah, not, not back this then. This is before The Chronic was even. Is, yeah. There was no yeah. New York City old school. And, and, and you know what? It, it, and that compounded with the fact that it was far from legal. So mm -hmm. we're smoking things that we don't know what we're smoking. We're buying with, them from bodegas. With the heightened paranoia of possible persecution and prosecution. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't like a fun experience where it's less like, oh, let's smoke and let, your, and, and let your hair down and like relax. It was like, let's smoke and make sure we don't get arrested. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you were still, uh, you were still on edge. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about like the paranoia that mm -hmm. was heightened by that, uh, it's unsurprising now in mm -hmm. retrospect, right? Like th th just that angst. Mm -hmm. Of, yeah. of, 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 you know, you could, it, it could be your turn next mm -hmm. just for, just for looking like you. So fast forward to 2016, okay. I get this call mm -hmm. and that ended up to me becoming the head of strategic partnerships for uh, BR Brands mm -hmm. and or Rose Capital, a private equity firm mm -hmm. uh, located, you know, in, in Greenwich, Connecticut. Okay. And I'm working in the legal cannabis space, uh, uh, you know, doing what we're doing right now, essentially, it's like how do we how do we utilize our our mm -hmm. uh, skills mm -hmm. as 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 artists as as um, storytellers to now tell this uh, this emerging story, this mm -hmm. industry that has so much potential. You know, social equity uh, no is 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 a huge um, component of of what drives me to uh, this. In the way that my 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 commutation, my executive clemency was really really dope. Mm -hmm. It was meaningful and significant and, and impactful. I say it was not enough. Mm. So my seat at That's the right. table is dope, is meaningful and Especially impactful. Especially with people of color and how we were disproportionately right. affected by the cannabis, anti-cannabis laws Correct. that we grew up under. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, talk to me about your family. You have a bouncing baby girl. I met my wife in 2015. We had our daughter in 2017. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Prior to us, mm -hmm. I wanted it. I had hopes. I had, I had dreams and aspirations. But it was kind of like that thing that I was talking about earlier. I was gone from 25 to 33. Mm -hmm. I came home when I was 33. 
And while I'd grown in so many ways and while I'd ed- and become an autodidact and, 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 and tried to continue in the path of the tradition of those who made the most of extenuating circumstances, there were just things that were b- beyond my control. Like, well, you know, how do you, how do you, how, how do you have your, your, your partner, right? Like, how, 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 how do you be that intimate? How do you, how, how do you, how do you let go? How do you? I mean, yeah. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have those those skills of of uh, and and you know, some might, my my wife might say on certain days I still don't have those mm-hmm. skills. So, what's it like to now have a, a, a family? Oh, mm. Man, it's like being home. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Forte. Other people party. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank, Thank you. you. No doubt. Oh man. <laughs>